Hi, my name is Ryan. Um, thought I'd uh, bring you along on a uh, little bit of a uh, kind of my first uh, machining job. Uh, at least that uh, it's going to take a uh, at least a little bit of uh, precision. Um, I bought a uh, Starrett 196 uh, indicator off of uh, eBay and uh, I found uh, when I got it that the uh, the back uh, where the indicator holder is only had this small little uh, protrusion um, out of it and so what I want to do is uh, I'm going to take this out and I got some uh, a uh, some 5 sixteenths uh, square uh, e-stock that's about that uh, same uh, width and what I want to do is actually um, um, mill a uh, replacement for this that uh, will have the uh, the flats you know going in here but then have a, a round stem that can uh, fit into uh, some of the snugs that I use for my other indicator holders and so uh, I'm going to start taking this out. I don't know if this is the uh, design originally, but uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, kind of uh, take this out. Hopefully you can see that uh, right there. But uh, So I'm just going to uh, take that uh, key stock and I'm going to uh, chuck it into the four jaw chuck, mill the uh, key stock round and to the uh, dimension of uh, one of the other holders uh, that I have or one of the other stems on one of the other indicators that I have that fits into the uh, into the uh, snug for the indicator and that'll be about uh, 0.24 seven was the diameter on that so I'll probably just make it a little bit smaller than that so round that off and then uh, use my uh, new indexing uh, 5c indexing uh, fixture that I got uh, kind of at that uh, same uh, screw machine shop if you uh, watch Tubal Kane's videos where he uh, go shopping at the uh, screw machine I picked up a uh, couple things uh, down over there. One was the 5C call it fixture that you'll see later. But uh, otherwise, we'll uh, see how this goes. Hopefully, uh, anybody who uh, decides to watch through this uh, gets some uh, enjoyment out of it. I'll see you in a little bit. Just uh, rounding the uh, corners of the uh, square stock. And I'm going to take it slow here. how this cutter cuts. Kind of using the uh, this bit here with the for the rounded edge that it has. Try to uh, contour that inside corner. Try to crack this piece with a different bit. I uh, the bit right into it. That's why I'm not trying to go too fast here. Since I hadn't uh, tried this bit before. It's 
since I don't have uh, any kind of indicators here on the front, uh, I'm using a uh, dial indicator on the bed on the back side of the uh, lathe here to uh, tell me when I'm supposed to stop. I'll try to get a little bit more cut on this pass. Feed it real slow. Still uh, kind of trying to work out the uh, dials and what the uh, markers mean uh, on the uh, cross feed. Until I actually uh, cleaned it, I didn't even realize there was uh, barks on there. And I don't know if they're in thousands or hundreds or five thousandths. I'll have to uh, find out what the uh, pitch of the uh, cross tag or slide uh, bolt is. We can do a little calculation on uh, on exactly how many uh, increments there are. So we'll go here a little bit more and get a couple more thousandths out. And then polish it up to its final size. But somewhere between 242 and uh, 245. So we'll just uh, give it a little bit of uh, polish with some uh, 320 grit. Just wanted to get you a little uh, wider look here at the uh, WF and J Barnes uh, lathe. I don't know for sure what uh, model it is. Um, I don't know if it's a number five. Is um, I've been able to get an exact match and. Some of the plates on it uh, don't quite match what uh, they say should be uh, um, listed on it, uh, like on the uh, the thread pitch gauge down here. It was supposed to have a mark if it was number five, but uh, it does have a, a quick change or or it has change gears for uh, the different uh, threading and. Um, that's the uh, the dog plate that I have for it. Now, like I said, I have uh, part of the uh, pieces uh, taken out here, or I didn't put it back together just to uh, do this, since I uh, wasn't able to do, use the uh, auto feed. But it's the uh, mechanism uh, for the auto feed uh, down here. I'll get that out of there since all you get is glare anyway, and. Um, What's different on here is that the, um, or at least I don't know how different, the, uh, the mechanism uh, on here is one such that uh, when you uh, have it in the neutral position, and I forget exactly if it's up or forward uh, for the neutral position, it goes uh, one way. and. Um, and if you actually uh, go all the way one way or the other, it determines whether the uh, the carriage goes back and forth, goes either towards the headstock or away from the headstock. And so uh, I was able to uh, 
I didn't get a chance to, before it uh, crashed last time, and like I said, uh, it's this uh, lever here, the mechanism that uh, there's a uh, two gears that go onto the spindle on the other side of here. One meshes with the gear on this side, and the other one meshes with the gear on this side. And because it had been broken a few times, and I've even done it, uh, and I've just tried to do a weld braise or a weld uh, and uh, recut by hand fix on it. Uh, it catches in uh, certain locations and even when I was running uh, through up or running up here one of the places that it was actually catching was right about the uh, place I was uh, finishing up so I kind of had to muscle through that a little bit but let's see uh, the old thing uh, used to be uh, bell dripping um, from uh, the power above, and um, but then uh, they uh, somebody that had it before me uh, built the uh, the riser and the uh, everything and put the uh, motor on. Now the motor does also have a reversing switch. Um, if you would have to uh, run everything uh, backwards that way too. It's got uh, back gears. Um, the belts were a little loose, so just in the uh, for the sake of uh, quickly doing it here, I uh, added the uh, extra pulley in there to. Uh, Center of the bit uh, here is close. Be back here, just grab some oil. Check this out here again. Make sure my eyes weren't lying to me. And looks like we're pretty good there. I just left the uh, the mill vise in there. Okay, get you back on to the part here. Get a little organized here. Good. New to this whole camera thing. Um, kind of new to the whole machining thing too. But uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just taking the, uh, that's the uh, back plunger gauge. And uh, if you can see, that's the uh, slot that's in the back there. I just kind of want to make sure that the uh, slot height is uh, such that the uh, piece will go in and it looks pretty good. Now I'm a little bit uh, 
too wide on it, which uh, I thought I might be um, going into it. The slot list is about uh, 280. And the width on that is about 316. So do a little math here. By the way, I uh, got a math major in high school, but I was or in college, but I always tell people I was never an arithmetic major. So that's a difference of about uh, point, uh, 0 0.036, so it'll be about point zero one eight per side that I'll need to take off. Sorry about that, I had a few camera problems. Uh, just what I'd done was uh, just went down and uh, touched off on one side after uh, figuring out uh, how much I had to take off per side and um, took off that per side and then uh, indexed at 180 again and uh, I'm just going to uh, check the uh, check the fit again since I still have it here make sure that I took off and off That actually slides on there uh, pretty nicely. So I will uh, kind of get back set up for the uh, next. Okay, I'm uh, kind of got things uh, set up here. I measured it, and it's a uh, closest I could uh, see on the uh, measurement for the uh, screw and the screw hole was a. Uh, 'll we'll go ahead here and uh, try to test fit the uh, screw you may not have noticed but uh, since I'm uh, zoomed in on here but the uh, <laughs> I ended up having to uh, take off the vise that I was kind of uh, working all around when I uh, dropped a little uh, six uh, thirty second uh, screw and it happened to uh, fall in the device and I couldn't fish it out so I ended up having to take the vise off in order to retrieve the screw so I guess I should have done that uh, right away <laughs> been able to use the uh, this fixture right in the middle but screw goes in
little snug, but hopefully that'll do. We'll go ahead and uh, try to uh, fit this here. Um, I'll probably have to go back in and uh, deburr some of the edges on uh, that piece there. But uh, once again, this is the uh, stare at uh, 196 uh, back plunger gauge. And so what I wanted to do was uh, replace that piece with A different one here that would uh, allow me to uh, use the, uh, the little, uh, oops, sorry, the uh, use the cinches on it. Not used to uh, working here on the camera, so I got you a little off uh, off screen there, but kind of show you here. So we'll uh, lay that down there. Lay that in there. How about that? Uh, before I push down on that. Uh, put something under there to uh, protect the screen. Screw sometimes it's nice when your uh, screwdriver is a little magnetic, sometimes it's not. We'll see if it works a little better that way. Thought something was going wrong there when I first put it in. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, pointing pretty cattywampus. As I uh, snug it down here, the uh, it kind of straightens up. So hopefully uh, that'll work. I'm gonna go uh, grab a uh, one of the cinches from. Uh, one of the other back plungers that I kind of copied the uh, diameters off and give a uh, give it a qu quick run through here. Straight there, probably have to be normally using it the uh, the other way around from the holder, but uh, it's got I got a couple uh, of the uh, contacts on order since. Uh, when I got this one off of eBay, I didn't uh, have any backs on it. So, otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, like I said, this is my first video. Probably uh, I put any up out others out there. Hopefully, they'll uh, get better. Thanks for watching.